Hey, what's up guys, it's Dark Room Duels, and today I've got one of my favorite decks to deck profile today. And I know what you guys are going to say, I'm going to be strapping that helmet on real tight today. But without further ado, we're playing Evil Swarms. Now, you see, with Pendulum Magicians coming out, I just don't want to have to deal with them. And with Ophion, that makes things possible. Um, I'm really sad about my Shadows. I know it's been a little bit by now, but... I'm really still sad about them. I really enjoyed them. I loved Evil Swarms and Shadows. They were really anti-meta. They were both the enemy in uh, dual terminal history. But without further ado, let's get into the stack profile. Still, still full of sadness. Um, first off, we're playing three copies of Evil Swarm Kirkion. Um, with Kirkion, he is essentially recycling your monsters like crazy. Um, when he is normal summoned, or at any time while he's on the field, once per turn, you can remove from play a... a Evil Sworn in your graveyard to add one Evil Sworn to your hand, and then you can conduct, after you complete that, you can conduct an additional normal summon. So if you have two engrave, you can add one back, put it in, remove one, not in that order, and then add one to hand, and then overlay an uh, Ophion, which is typically your main play of this deck. That's why it's a helmet deck, and I still love it. Um, then I play three copies of Evil Swarm Caster, with Caster, he lets you conduct an additional normal summon. That's about all he does. Let you go for Ophion. Um, then I play personally, I know a lot of people only play two, but I like playing three, Evil Sworn Thunderbird. And one of mine is a misprint because it is lower um, than the other ones, if you'll notice. See? It's a little lower. Um, but I play three copies of Thunderbird. Because with Thunderbird, if there is any time that you have a full board and your opponent drops something like a Dark Hole or Ragaki, you just remove this. It runs away like a bitch. Or if it, any act, any effect is activated any time while this card is face up on the field, you can just banish it, and then it comes back. So essentially, you can banish this, and the next turn, go for an Ophion play. And I'm going to be saying Ophion a lot. But um, he is your main play of this deck. Then I'm playing three copies of Evil Sworn Mandragon. Mandragra. Um, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card. Essentially, it's a Cyber Dragon, but it, again, lets you help you go for Overrun. Oh, no, this deck actually is really fun to play against Necros. Or not Necros, um, Cosmos. Um, then, for the Rabbit Engine, I play three copies of Eos One Heliotrope, and he's nothing to laugh at, because he's 1950 beater, and he can swing over a lot of stuff real quick. And then I play one copy of Rescue Rabbit. Yes, I still have my secret rare. I was hoping with the ban list this was going to go to two, but sadly it didn't. Really disappointed about that. I really wish this would have gone to two. But uh, hey, whatever. We live and we we live and we hope. Um, then my one tech card is one copy of Thunder King Ryo. He prevents my opponent from searching and prevents my opponent from special summoning because he does put that pressure on my opponent to not special summon because it's going to make it impossible for you to keep a powerful monster on board with him. If you summon something that's lower that I think is going to be problematic, I send him to grave. If you summon something that's too high for him to beat over, I'm just going to tribute him. So, you know, that's how it works. And temporarily it makes it so you can't beat over him. So essentially, yeah, that's kind of why I'm playing Thunder King Rayo. But for another tech card that I am playing in this deck, and that is, sadly, because it got hit, three copies of Heroic Challenger, Assault Halibur. With Assault Halibur, it's a really, really good card that you can immediately special summon out. It puts board pressure on your opponent, and anytime it inflicts damage, you can add another version of, or a Heroic Challenger from your deck to your hand, which typically is just going to be another Heroic Challenger, Assault Halibur. Um, he also inflicts piercing damage, which is really nice, but he helps me really for my rank four plays, so that's why I'm playing three copies of him. I wanted to play Jurigendo, but I waited too long, and Jurigendo went up way up, way up real fast so i ended up just sticking with playing three copies of heroic challenger but that was a long time ago i wanted during endo um then for my one ofs i'm playing one copy of regeki to wipe board wipe just in case before i met govion i'm playing one copy of reinforcements of the army to add my casters or my assault halibirds i'm playing one copy of dimensional prison just in case or not dimensional prison dimensional fisher to banish all my opponent stuff because it stops a lot of decks still um, it just throws your opponent off because your opponent's naturally going to think that you're going to just put it in grave and then with this, they just don't. Um, then I'm playing one copy of Book of Moon and that's all for my one ofs. Then I'm playing, this is something a little odd that people are going to say again, but I still like three copies of Infestation Pandemic because with Ophion, you're going to get this. And it's essentially a Forbidden Lance for all your Evil Swarm monsters. Why would you not play this at three? 
it's just a lot of fun to play at three and it prevents you. And with this next, in this next tech card, it always pays to be able to add something in hand that's kind of useless and it gets rid of stuff. And that is in the form of two copies of Mass Change 2. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm combining one helmet deck with another helmet deck. And it's working. It's working very well. I've tried it at three, but it just doesn't work at all at three. It gets entirely too cloggy and it just is it just doesn't work with the way I'm playing it. So I'm only playing two copies of Mass Change 2 for now. Um, then that's all for the spells. The traps, I'm playing one copy of Compulse, one copy of Bottomless, one Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah, I threw you off. I didn't play that solemn yet. One copy of Solemn Warning, hopefully, for a long time until that new one comes out. One copy of Ring of Destruction, if I can get a hold of the new one. One copy of Infestation Pandemic. I know, that's six already, right, guys? I'm just going to keep going. And then one copy of Macrocosmos, because it's at one. So that's all for my one of traps. I mean, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. You know, essentially control, um, with the exception of Infestation Infection, because Infestation Infection lets me grab uh, Evil Swarm by putting one back in my deck. So, you know, uh, once per turn, you can shuffle one L Sworn, which is usually going to be it's evil, either Evil Sworn or um, Steel Sworn monster from your hand or face up on your side of the field into the main deck. Add one L Sworn monster from your deck. So it just really helps out. It lets you add anything you need to add, and it just keeps the plays rolling. Then I'm playing two copies of Mirror Force because they pretty much turn into humongous deep prisons when I have either Dark Law on board, Dimensional Fissure, or Macrocosmos. And that makes people sad. And plus they look like eyes and they're really creepy looking. Um, then I'm playing two copies of Venus Chain because, again, I don't want you to go in and attack my Ophion. I need to protect him. So that's what I'm playing for my main deck. But without further ado... Let's get into the extra deck. I really do think this deck is going to be kind of viable during the next format. I don't think it's going to be the best deck by far, but I think it's going to be fun to play, and it would be a fun deck to take the regionals or something like that, or even a local to play as a rogue deck just to throw people off. It's not as fast as it used to be, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this deck. Um, it just throws people off. And then here's the main boss monster. You're going to always play three copies of Evil Sworn Ophion. Um, with Ophion, it makes it so your opponent cannot special summon level 5 or higher monsters, or what, with anybody. Nobody can spell special summon. I'm saying my opponent because it's not going to matter to me. I'm not going to special summon anything level uh, level 5 or higher. Um, and then once per turn, I can detach one, and he searches an infestation spell or trap card. So, he's a searcher, and he's in, he just stops stuff. So, then I'm playing one copy of 66 Key Beetle. I have played with the idea of putting safe zone back in just for the key beetle lock with Ophion and key beetle. But that is kind of an old slow combo with the way the deck played. So I really haven't, if I had Drew Gendo's, I would really consider it, but I just haven't yet. So it's a, de it's a definite side deck card, but in case you need even bigger of a beater, just in case, uh, I play one Dark Rebellion, um, and then I play one uh, Karen Gorgon Knight, just in case I need to not let my Ophion be targeted. <laughs> um, for that random matchup against Burning Abyss, I get, or not Burning Abyss, uh, Brotherhood of the Fire Fist, I play one uh, 103, just in case, or anything that gets an attack boost, I see the opportunity, I'd use it. Uh, then I play one Evil Swarm Bahamut because it lets me take my opponent's stuff. As long as I detach one card, I can target one monster from your my, my opponent controls and take control of it. One on one because I need to steal my sh opponent's shit. One Castile. And then this is a card that a lot of people look over when they build this deck. But if you play a Saul Halberd, you can actually play this. And that is one copy of Heroic Champion Excalibur. With Heroic Champion Excalibur, you're essentially getting a 4k beater just in case you need it. I mean, I know you do have, what's his name, uh, Dark Rebellion, but, and it is a better card than this, but if you're in late game and you special summon out, you know, Heroic Challenger, uh, what's his name, uh, Assault Halberd, and then you still have another one in hand and you normal summon it, you go into this late game and you swing over and you win, you know, you just, you won with it. So, it's happened. Um, then I play one Ga Gaga Ga Cowboy for game. 
And then I play one number 80 Rhapsody and Berserk to make my Ophion a 3750 beater. Good luck beating over that without your towers, you some bitch. Um, then I play two copies. Oh, wait, you can even make towers against me. Ha! Because it's banned. And then I play two copies of Masked Hero Danklaw, as I call him. But his name is actually Darklaw, but I always call him Danklaw. Um, but he essentially makes it so if once per turn when my opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand. Or when they... Let me see. Um, once per turn if your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand. Yeah, exactly. You can pick one card at random and banish it. So there's not going to be a lot of searching with against warrior decks, I guess. But it still does help with that macro cosmos effect. And it only works for my opponent that it banishes their stuff. So that's why I'm trying it out. Um, there may be a future update where I don't play this with this deck during this format, but, uh, let's see what happens. I'm really enjoying Dark Law on the deck, because, you know, with Ophion plus Dark Law plus Key Beetle, your opponent's gonna have a bad day. So, that is it for my Evil Sworn deck. Guys, don't forget to check in the comment section below, or not the comment section, the description below for my Yu-Gi-Oh! page. It is, I am the admin of the page, one of the admins of the page, that hosts it, and we post a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! news out on that page. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video all over the place, and uh, do it for the Kirkion and the Ophion. Do it for the Ophion, like do it for the Vine, but do it for the Ophion. But uh, guys, I will catch you later. Don't forget to send me requests in the comments for the next deck profile you'd like to see. But anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duelist, and I'm out.